There's been a lot of discussion on anchors, um, setting our lines in trees, and uh, I've just had a few thoughts that I wanted to share. I'm sitting here thinking about a lot of stuff, and I climb on double anchors a lot. Uh, that's kind of how I do my system, is use both ends of my climbing line. I have a sewn or spliced termination at each end of my line. Um, I'll pick an anchor that I know is without a doubt a solid anchor and then I'll use a secondary for other things and I'll advance my anchor when I get up in the tree and I can evaluate that anchor better. So, um, And in Europe right now there's evidently mandated a twin line um, always used type of an approach. Although, but anyway, they've come up with all these things because anchors are failing. And I think, you know, I did a video on how to test anchors and not doing a bounce test and um, putting a double load on it that's sustained and observing it and all those things or setting an anchor that to you is beyond doubt a good anchor. Uh, I think there's a lot of other approaches other than just always setting two anchors. Um, there's there's also a lot of or um, manipulating anchors um, in the tree um, and there's <clears throat> some of it takes a, to me a lot of thought as to which way the forces are going and so that's kind of what I've played with and I've set up here is to give some examples of it's not always um, obvious um, it's not always intuitive as to where the forces are going and what's happening with those forces. Nature is not always intuitive. Um, I love science and nature and all those kind of things, but some of the things just kind of blow your mind. It's like um, squeezing a hose. You'd think you'd develop more pressure, but you actually get that venturi effect and you lower the pressure. Um, every time I see a big thunderstorm or a cloud going up and I think of all that heavy moisture there's a you know you look at a cloud there's enough moisture in that cloud to fill a swimming pool and yet that cloud because it is moisture laden is lighter than the surrounding dry air some things are just not intuitive when it comes to nature and i think sometimes the way we move and do things with our anchors is not necessarily intuitive either so I'm gonna, and I'm not an artist, I can't even do a stick figure, but just in the, um, try to save some time, uh, I'm gonna draw some silly little diagrams, and, and this is my setup, and I'll explain that in a minute. But um, I'm gonna draw some little examples here. All right, this is, this is one example that I know most people would um, recognize. So. I know you're laughing. So here's a here's a tree you want to pull down, right? You want to pull it over, make sure it falls the right direction. So you climb up, you tie a you tie a rope off, and then you're gonna pull this way. That force, depending on how hard you pull, that force going laterally is what you want to get the tree to fall the direction that you're pulling, right? Well, a lot of times, rather than climbing up the tree and setting that anchor up there, it's easier to throw your line, let it drop back down, and tie it off on the bottom. Now, it may not be intuitive to think that you're going to get the same amount of force here by the same amount of pull that you put here. The forces change, the vector of that force is going to change, but nonetheless, this, that lateral force that's pulling the tree over, is not going to change. It's going to be the same. And you will have downward force that comes, as we know, when we take a rope up and down. We double the force, possibly. Um, same thing happens here. There's a little bit of a vector there. But you're going to induce some compression force. Um, wood is incredibly strong when it comes to compression. And I don't think that that's ever an issue when you're pushing straight down on, on wood. Um, 
if there's a bend in it, of course, then that's a different issue. But so if you pull down on this, you've induced some compression load on the trunk, but the lateral force is going to be the same. So that may not be um, all that intuitive. Let me let me draw another example. So say we have a tree that goes up and then there's a, a limb that comes off and goes this way or something and, and the tree goes up. So we've tied an anchor out here away from the trunk and, and we want to climb up the tree that way. Um, now we know if we double that, if we put another line down there, it's going to increase the load and all those kind of things. But what if we want to move this anchor without untying this? We now move the rope out and there's a little limb here and we do this redirect and now we've we've loaded um, that branch a little bit differently. Again, we've induced a compression load, and if that's a nice straight branch, that compression load would be, uh, to me, in most cases, insignificant um, going down on the limb. But what we have done is we've induced more load out here. So again, just like in my previous example, the lateral force that is pushing down on that branch is going to be the same here as if we never even did that redirect. In other words, we're pulling down on this now. This, this going out and redirecting it didn't do anything to lessen the amount of force that we're pulling down on that limb. And that's what we really care about. We really care about that bending moment on that limb that's going to make that limb break and cause us to have some problems. So even though you're tied off down here someplace or tied off in the trunk someplace, if you take your line out here, um, you're going to increase the load on that. The compression force will be um, introduced into the limb, but you're not saving any of that lateral moment that downward force on the limb that's causing you problems in the first place and here's here's another example and again sometimes this may not be intuitive but let's say we have a tree so let's say we have a tree like this and and we want our line to go up and over and I'm not measuring angles or anything, and somehow we tie the tree off, or we tie our line off over here. So we tie our line off on the ground over here, and then we're going to climb up the rope on this side over here. Well, intuitively, you might think that because we put this in three places, that, you know, we've got a third of the load here, and we've got a third of the load here, and we've got a third of the load here. So we've kind of spread that out. And that's not the case. Um, and this will all be dependent on how much friction there is. And I'm going to disregard friction because that's my um, safety factor. Uh, and plus, uh, it's always different, different trees and everything else. So it's, it's not shared a third, a third, a third. To get that we know that when we take our line up and over something it can as much as double it well the same thing is true here even though we've taken it over these three angles we still have a hundred percent of our load here and we have a hundred percent of our load here so down the trunk of the tree someplace is two per hundred percent of our load that's being exerted on the tree you may have heard critical angle and that's like 120 degrees. There's now rather than having a third and a third and a third, we actually have a hundred percent of the load going this direction. We have a hundred percent of the load going this direction. We have a hundred percent of the load going this direction. So we've not, we've not lessened the climber's load. Now granted compression force on these limbs, if these limbs are indeed uh, all compression, but if you put it out on a branch someplace, 
because you spread it around three times, it doesn't mean that it's any less. You still have 100% of your load, 100% of your load, 100% of your load. Again, disregarding friction. So um, someplace in there, regardless of how you do that, if you take your if you take your rope and just bring it up and right back down over that limb, you're putting 200% on that tree. Same thing here. It's not a third, third, and a third. So some things are not just intuitive. That brings me to some of the stuff I've been playing with just recently. So I think all of this is in view. So I've got a couple of um, weights down here that total um, 30 kilograms. Um, so 30 kilograms is going to be my working number. What I've got is I've got a Rock Exotica load cell here and another load cell there that is measuring the lateral, the lateral force um, in this configuration. And then I've set these um, posts here that will isolate just the lateral force. Um, I'm not interested in knowing, I mean, if, if there's 30 kilograms in here, you could, if there's no friction, you could chase that tension all the way around and it's going to be 30 kilograms that go throughout the rope. But um, in this configuration, I'm going to try some carabiners. I'm going to try some pretty efficient pulleys. Um, and we're going to do a couple different little configurations. All right, so this is going between zero and two. Over here, we're holding pretty constant at two. And I'm going to now take my weight. All right, so this is uh, just carabiner, carabiner, going through an efficient pulley. And... Um, between those, 18 would be the halfway mark. All right, so we balance that. Give it a couple of little shots here and there. So right now I'm seeing 46 kilograms and 44, it's going between 44 and 46. And again, this was 30. And this one here is seeing 29, 29. So because I've moved it around a little bit, most of this weight is going through the line, coming back and it's being measured right here. So we're seeing 46, 46. That is the force, the lateral force. So if I'm building a couple anchors, with limbs in a tree, say the say the tree has some limbs like this and I'm tying these together, you know, first of all, I'm going to be countering the weight of whatever limb is there, but then I'm inducing 46, 46 kilograms of force uh, from a 30 kilogram load, pulling those branches together. And depending on the limbs, I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, so let's see what happens when I'll take this one off and we'll swap that out with um, a carabiner rather than a pulley. Okay, so now, again, we'll see this one's showing uh, between 46 and 48. So maybe a little bit more. Not much. And this one's 44 to 46. So about the same. And over here we're seeing 27, 27.6. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap all this out. And I'm going to put uh, efficient pulleys on all of this. And we'll see what that looks like. Again, pulleys... Are multipliers it can be a multiplication of greater than one or it can be a multiplication of less than one um, of course less than one is going to be less force but that that again comes 
on the heels of that critical angle. All right, and being that it's pretty good pulleys, it's easier to find find the balance. Get everything balanced. I've kind of played with it to get the pulleys to go to center. All right, now now we see fifty six. And we would probably see the same over here, 54. And it's holding pretty steady at 54. So that's 54. And now I'm seeing 29.6 over here. So um, 9.6. So that's almost the full weight because of the efficiency of these pulleys is letting that entire weight and the tension follow all the way over to that anchor so but notice we've got 56 kilograms of force if this was my limb up there someplace i have now 56 kilograms of force um, pulling those limbs together So this is actually applying one point, well, let's say 1.9, 1 1.9 1 .9 times this load. It's almost that two times the load. So you can imagine if this was now turned on its side and this was getting pulled, if this was the top, it was getting pulled down there we would be back to that two times the load, right? 180, 180, um, 180 degrees. So kind of interesting. Remember, pulleys are force multipliers. All right, let's say, let's say our force is that much, right? So we have that much force. If this was 180, and we put another line that would be two times the force but since we don't have that if we put another line that's this much then to figure out what that vector is it's going to be a little bit less so when when you're figuring out what your force vectors will be that's going to be a big clue as to what you're putting on that tree. All right, I'm going to swap this out for some very inefficient uh, carabiners. Do first of all, we're going to weigh this. So that's 30, 30 kilograms right there. Okay, now without moving things around, where's my chuck? Without moving things around, I'm saying 19.6 here. So there's an awful lot of friction that's causing 30 kilograms to turn into almost 20. So I'm losing a third. Over here, I'm seeing 26 kilograms, 28 now. So 26 to 28. And over here, I'm seeing 26, 24 to 26. So we'll say back to 26. So without pulleys, I'm seeing 26 kilograms of force that is trying to bend my limb or stem, whatever I connected to, directly that way. 26 kilograms going that way. Now, if I try to balance this out a little bit, just move it around, pull up, pull down. Now that I've balanced things out a little, I find that kind of interesting because I've essentially done what the pulleys do in trying to um, balance the load. So now I'm seeing 30. And over here, I see 30.
and right now here I see 21 so again I've lost a third all right let's see if we're seeing this <clears throat> okay so what we have now is 24 we're almost back to this 26 but we've got we've got 24 and over here we also have 24 sometimes it'll hit 26 but 24 and this 30 kilograms is seeing quite a bit of friction from the tight bend on that four kilonewton carabiner and over here we're seeing 24 um, 24 kilograms 24.2 or so but so 24 now and I'm not I'm not measuring this but again this is about a 90 degree angle and so you can pretty much surmise that um, this is going to be if it was a critical angle 60 degrees it would be 30 kilograms right there if it's if it's 90 degrees it's going to be 1.41 or whatever it is if it was all the way 180 it would be doubled so um, you know you can always kind of tell what that force vector is but what I find interesting is what these lateral forces is are and, it, and again you can do the you can do the force vector picture and stuff, but um, so now I'm going to put a pulley on here and we'll see what difference that makes. Okay, so this is showing 29, 29 or 30, which reflects the efficiency of that pulley, the 30 kilogram load I should be saying kilonewtons so I see a 30 kilonewton force here and I'm not measuring this force but if we were to measure this force going going that direction we would expect it to be multiplied by um, what is that 1.1.4 if this was a 90 degree so but what I'm really concerned about is what's pushing on my limb right there so i kind of that kind of makes sense um now i'm going to swap things around a little bit and we're going to see and demonstrate again how pulleys are force multipliers all right so now i'm seeing 58 and 58 58 and 58 almost doubled and this is 28.6 so pretty efficient pulleys and you know why we're not getting the full 60 the full doubled load because of this little bit of sag if that were to be brought up so you wouldn't have that angle okay this is this is kind of interesting to me and I again I, I have I haven't figured this out yet um, and I do find it interesting um, there's there's an answer in there someplace but if I lift this up just straight up from where it is and take all the weight off everything most of the weight off get things so it's sagging I come in, I gently don't touch anything. I have 54 over here. I have 54 over here. And right here, I've got 24.8, almost 25. So there's, there's a loss going in there, reflected in there. Now, all, of I'm, all I'm gonna do is push up on this and to me that's getting this a uh, more direct of a pull so we should see that doubling and I'm gonna push up and you can see the rope kind of move 
through that pulley a little bit. Nothing else is really touching it. So I push that up and just gently let it settle back down. I've gone all the way up to 66 and 66, 64 to 66. And I'm 34.4. I'll write those down because that's so 34 and I'm seeing 66, 64, 66, and 66. And that was by me pushing up or lifting up on that load. So somehow doing that, I've induced more force in addition to what the weight, weight is already um, applying. And nothing is touching the backs of the pulleys. Everything is free to move. I just find that interesting that by pushing up here, um, and I guess what that is doing is it's putting all more directly in line, but I've gone, I've gone in excess of two times. Now, if I lift up on this and take that off and just let it settle again, I'm right back to 25.6, 54, and 54. That's interesting. So watch this. I'm going to push up. Just push straight up on that pulley. The rope is barely moving, but it goes through there. And I lift up on that. That hasn't changed much. And now when I let go on that, this has gone to 66, 64, 66, and again, 34. So something happens in there that uh, I kind of haven't figured out. But uh, something about just adding, adding some tension. But in this case, it does sit on the back side of the pulleys, so. I don't know that that means anything really, but it's just interesting. Okay, so I've just made a static connection at both ends. It's pretty much centered. And I'm not gonna measure this, but let's say that's 60. This is 60, and this is 60. That's that critical angle. So the force that's being applied to, if I set this up for static anchor, wouldn't be retrievable. Um, um, so now if it's all set up static, this is uh, going between 14 and 16. And this one's pretty solid at 14. And as we know, we have 30, uh, 30 kilograms here of weight. So um, you would expect this to have 100%, 100%, 100%. And when we come over here, it's pulling this way. It's gone back to half of that. So 15, 50 kilo, 15 kilonewtons of force pulling those limbs together um, without any pulleys up there. 